Several different materials will work for making resin molds, as in HDP, HDPE large cups, small cups, recycled items, and silicone molds. Some materials don't work. It all depends on one-time use or multiple uses. As in this melamine board, which I'm going to use for my large round resin mold. I wanted a 16 inch diameter mold so it'll fit over the bed of my lathe. And all I needed to do was just trim up the board a little bit and cut the circle. I'm using my bandsaw circle cutting jig with double-sided stick tape, and it makes it so I don't have to drill any holes in the piece. If you haven't used it before, sheathing tape is extremely sticky. I also decided to use this metal hanging strap. It's galvanized steel and comes in rolls. And this is gonna help uh, support the edge and the seams of the mold. I'm adding one and a half inch pan head screws and pre-drilling the holes. You definitely want to pre-drill the hole with this melamine board. And if you can, use fine screws rather than coarse. Um, I can mark this so I know um, how it goes back together. And for extra protection, I added sheathing tape on the bottom for leaks. You definitely don't want resin leaking all over your shop. I let the caulk dry for a day and then added a mold release. And I like to spray that outside because it smells and I don't want silicone on any of my tools. Perfect. Now here is where I learned that all silicones are not the same. You should only use silicones that are 100% silicone with no extra additives in it like flexibility properties or things like that because I believe the resin sticks to those elements. Even had a little silicone on the bottom and it ripped the melamine off the board. I mean, great strong silicone, but just not for this application. So I tried a few different things. I tried the plexiglass edge again with 100% silicone. And I also added some tuck tape over the base to cover the wood that was now exposed. This time I had great success, including my little silicone mold I used for clock numbers. After I unscrewed the edge, it basically just peeled right off. The epoxy resin didn't stick to the plexiglass at all. However, the silicone in the hot glue did, so I had to scrape it off. 
When I was prying the two pieces apart, I scraped some of the tape off with my chisel. So I just put some new tape on it and it's good to go again. But it still worked. It just came right off. This rubs right off of the tape. Piece on there. Took me a couple of times to get it right, but it's definitely very efficient and reusable now. So if you're interested in making uh, some molds, uh, this is a great way to do it. And it only takes a few minutes to undo the screws, clean it up, put it back together, and put a bead of silicone inside. I'm actually starting to make another one so I can have two going at once. This still needs a uh, caulk on the inside, but the caulk will not stick to the tape that I added on the inside. The resin doesn't stick to the plexiglass, but the caulk does. <laughs> that makes it so if you don't want to use plexiglass, even though it's nice and flexible, it molds to the shape very well, you could use like a thin piece of metal um, to put around here and just cover it with tuck tape and it'll probably do the same thing. If you did decide to use a different material than the plexiglass, you could use like a metal that would be flexible. You can mold around here and possibly just one seam. That would be a little bit better. Or if you had plexiglass that was big enough, I didn't have that in my shop. So I ended up having three different seams. Um, that would be an enhancement. And if you did use metal, you wouldn't need the metal band around here to help stabilize the seams. I hope you stuck around to the very end, enjoyed the show. If you're not into casting, don't worry about it. I'll have a project video coming out soon. So as always, stay safe in your shop at all times. Subscribe, click that bell, give me a thumbs up. Take care, thank you.